right? We were Margaret and we were here, and I came to the emergency room and caught her off of there about uh, nine weeks ago. Uh, what I remember was just being the other kind of room and just having dinner, sitting down in my chair, and just relaxing. And that's the last I remember. He sat in his chair, and uh, I thought he had fallen asleep, and it wasn't. His eyes started rolling back, and um, I went over to him and shook him and could get no response, so I called 911, and they directed me what to do, and I did CPR until they got there, and um, they tried to keep him stable until they could get him here, and it was pretty hard keeping him stable, but uh, that's about all I remember. I don't even remember getting to the hospital, but I know that when we got here, we had a huge crew just waiting and took over and just got him stable and did what they had to do to save his life. And so I told him, I said, do whatever you have to do to, you know, give him a chance. And that's when um, they started putting him into this coma. And I mean, he was like totally out. And, Dropped his body temperature to 32 degrees. Um, the purpose basically uh, is to slow the brain down so it doesn't uh, incur significant brain injury due to the period of lack of oxygen that occurred while the patient was having a cardiac arrest. So if we could slow the brain down enough that it doesn't die, the cells don't die off, and then rewarm the patient about 24 hours later, there's a much it has been shown that there is a much better chance of a significant uh, uh, neurological outcome, which is uh, uh, that can occur for that particular patient. Uh, we had like a nurse as long as it was on him. There was a nurse like twenty four seven in his room, you know, and they kept very close eye on him. And um, Dr. Solomon was here. I mean, I finally asked him if he ever went home. <laughs> <laughs> he was in there just constantly, you know, monitoring him and, and just did a great job. If we identify a patient who has had a cardiac arrest, which uh, technically should be witnessed so that we know when it began, how long it occurred for, and then cool them down within, a, within six hours to a blood temperature of about 32 degrees and keep them there for about 18 hours, and that has been shown that it reduces the, the, the metabolic rate of the brain down to about a point by, uh, to, to the level that it doesn't incur injury from lack of oxygen. And he made it through all that great and seemed to be responding better and um, still out of it, but would open his eyes and respond. He could um, he answered to, to commands, squeeze hands, move feet, all that. So we knew all that was functioning okay. And we felt like that he had minimum damage to his brain, you know, because of answering to the response. And once he finally came completely out of it, it was like the day before Thanksgiving. And... Oh, just like I woke up and spoke. And everyone was fine. As a matter of fact, I talked to her and I picked up the phone, called the office, talked to my folks at the office, reminded them of what we talked about before I'd left. And uh, everything was fine from that point on. I'm driving, walking now over there. You know, I don't see that he's out. He remembers everything that happened before. He's normal. I mean, you know, other than. You know, it's going to take him a while to get his heart muscle back up and all that, but his brain, everything's there. No disability, nothing. You know, just functions just like he did before all this happened. That's the thing about mercy. I'm thankful we were here. Okay. Yeah. I don't think we would have made it if we wouldn't have been here. Uh, I only believe that the hospital did a great job, the physicians did a great job, and I claimed all my nurses were angels. They did a good job. I was very, very pleased with what little I remember at Mercy Hospital.